Okay, so in this problem we have a regular hexagon, and that means a hexagon where every side, right, is equal. Um, so a regular hexagon is, of course, a special case. Every side's equal. And a hexagon means that there are six sides. So we have a regular hexagon that's enclosed by a circle, as shown in the following sketch. So we have our circle, and on the inside we have our hexagon. First they ask us to describe all the symmetries in the figure. So here, there's great symmetry by just following right, the hexagon vertices, right, these points all around the shape. If we follow along those lines, we get lines of symmetry where we can fold the hexagon and the surrounding circle exactly in half. We can also draw a line through the midpoints of each triangle and get another three lines of symmetry in this shape all through the center. Oops, all, I want to draw them through the center there, okay? And we can't draw other lines because, and you can try this of course, but if we draw other lines through the hexagon, we won't be able to fold the shape evenly. So that's a, there's a nice line symmetry there, there are six lines, but also the regular hexagon. Remember, it's, it's made of six equal sides, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So what does that mean about rotational symmetry. Well, remember, of course, that a circle has 360 degrees. And that means that here, as a full rotation of circle, when we rotate the hexagon, since every, right, since it has six repeating pieces or repeating sides and triangles within, within inside of it, that means we can take the full circle or rotation and divide it into six pieces. And that tells me that, okay, well then every 60 degrees, the shape will look the same. And that means the, the, the smallest angle I have to rotate it for it to repeat itself is 60 degrees. So it does have a rotational symmetry as well. So it has six lines of reflection symmetry and a rotational symmetry of 60 degrees, which is how far we have to rotate the shape before it repeats itself. Okay, what are the angle measures of the triangles in the figure? Explain how you know. All right, so first of all, um, we have a hexagon inside of a, of a circle. And a circle, if we go from the center to the circle itself, what, are, what is that? Well, that's a radius. So that means that every triangle here, since it's going from the center to the circle itself, is a radius, which means all of those are the same length, right? Go f from the middle of a circle anywhere on the circle, and you always get the same radius. So that means all these triangles have the exact same lengths. And also we're told it's a regular hexagon. And that means that all of the outer sides here of the triangles are also equal. Since all the sides are equal, we have equilateral triangles. And equilateral triangles, of course, have um, all 60 degree measures. And if, and if we didn't recognize the regular hexagon, what it meant, we could still say, okay, well, we divided the full rotation by six, and that told us that these inner angles here are each 60 degrees, right? Because we, we, we break our circle into six equal pieces, and that helps us find the angle measure of these angles. And then of course, like I said before, the radius lengths are equal, which means these triangles have two equal legs, so those angles are equal. So from this approach, you can say, okay, for each triangle, sketch it out right here, we know our inner angle is 60 degrees, we, right? We divided the full circle by 360, and we know these two angles are equal. So if this angle is x, so is this one. So you could say, right, a triangle has how many degrees? Well, they have 180. And if we add two x's to that, right, oops, uh, a triangle is 180 degrees, and in this case, it's made of, of the 60 degrees we have in the middle plus 2x. If we solve here for x, we'll get that x equals 60, which just reminds us that, yeah, every angle here is 60 degrees. So there are multiple ways to look at that problem. Okay, C. Suppose you started with a circle with the center marked. So now we're just starting with a circle. How can you use the symmetries you observed in part A to construct a regular triangle and a regular hexagon? So the middle is about here, let's say. The first thing I would do is draw a radius, right? And I know if I, if I draw these radiuses in both directions to extend them and make diameters, just like I'm doing here, I'll be getting lines of symmetry, right? And I'll be creating my, my basically the triangles I need. Let me 
where you draw that to create the hexagon, right? So here I draw one line from here to here, another about here, trying to make them as equal as possible, all crossing through the middle, and here, and now I've created my triangles, right? Except the last step, draw one more line, right? Although I've created, <laughs> what I've done is create an octagon, right? If I connect these, you can see, right, this will eventually form an octagon. So I definitely made a mistake there. Sorry about that. Um, I'm trying to follow my lines of symmetry. I think I drew this extra vertical line, which we don't need. So let me try that one more time. Diameter, draw another diameter, right, and this will work. Draw another diameter. And we create those triangles now by, by connecting our last pieces with more radius lanes. Although my circle is a little off, sorry. These triangles should be equal. Oh, boy. So we can recreate this whole process by drawing the diameters and then connecting them, and that will create equilateral triangles. Of course, assuming you drew this correctly, unlike I did, I created um, triangles that are much too large here on the top or bottom. So in a sense, we, we were able to create a regular triangle where all sides are the same by using the radius on both sides and then connecting the two pieces. And then um, here, we create a regular hexagon by connecting each of those triangles around the circumference of the circle with more radius lengths. So I, I just, the way I set up my diameters, it, it definitely confused things a bit. Sorry about that. Okay, how are your answers to parts A, B, and C related to the symmetries in any kaleidoscope pattern? Well, these, right, the, the hexagonal shape, the 60 degree rotation is connected very nicely to the way we construct kaleidoscopes and the types of um, symmetries we see in those wonderful shapes. But that's something I think I'll get into, into uh, for another video here. I'm just I'm thinking that I just wanted to focus mainly on the rotational and line symmetries of these two shapes to kind of understand what's happening. All right, thanks.